And from such sad beginnings we have come And with our hearts crisscrossed like rivers we have hung Our portraits in the air there's just so much goodness there, Lou. A final question I wanted to ask you because it would be a bit of a missed opportunity if I didn't. Your husband, your partner, happens to be one of the great producers of Our Times, Larry yes, Klein. You just walked in the room. I swear, just, can you just say hi to Nikki? She's in the Larry. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Nikki. Larry Klein in the room. In the flesh. Hello. As Hi, as we live Hello in the there. Room. Hello. Hello. Your ears must have been ringing. You must have I, I, I just stepped in to get my wallet. <laughs> I was holding onto his wallet. Yeah. That's what I do as his wife. You know, give me your wallet. Quite right. So we're learning Thanks. a lot about your relationship here too. <laughs> nice to meet you, Nikki. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Well, so charity, there is a Larry Klein. There we go. <laughs> a cameo appearance. Thank so you, Larry. Now, now the tree, he enters the room, the tree trimmers are outside, so I apologize for the sound. I don't care. I don't care. It's just too, it's, it's all too good. It's all too serendipitous. <laughs> he is one of the great producers of all time, of our times. And, and I mean that somebody who you would give that label to, producer, in the purest form, it means, as you know, as many people know, a lot of different things in our industry. Yes. <laughs> it covers a whole range of weird and wonderful tasks. And you were speaking about your earlier albums, many of them having an approach of them being live. And then of course, coming full circle, that Storytellers with Vince and WDR was not even supposed to be a recording per se. So you have albums that are recorded pre-Larry and post-Larry where you haven't worked with him and that you have worked with him as producer. So you're in the perfect position to analyze his work. And I wanted to know, what do you look for in a producer? And what are some of Larry's skills that you really value when he's producing you? Well, that second part is too large. I, I don't think we have time for that. But uh, I will start with the first part. What do I look for in a producer? Um, because I've recorded without a producer and now I've recorded with one of the greatest producers, but I've also been with other producers. Um, in, in also in all the side singing that I do, there are other people producing. I think what I look for is uh, intelligence, musical intelligence, and also human intelligence, like emotional intelligence to be quiet when needed, to not necessarily say everything that's going wrong with something when while it's going wrong, and that comes to teaching also. Don't, don't pick on everything. Pick one thing that you think that person can, might be able to improve, in that moment. And then the other things you can address at a later date. It's like relationships, right? You don't tell your husband or your partner or your, you know, or your friend, oh, you do that and you do that and you leave the seat open and the da 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 da. You just pick one battle at a time and hopefully, you, you know. And also you learn to accept things. So I think a producer who can read the room and also collaborate, but also understand that the artist is the artist. So the, the record in the end, the Larry doesn't walk into an interview with me. When you walked in here today, but you know, but so I'm I'm by myself speaking about this music. So I have to stand by everything that this music has. So in the end, I need to be the one who makes the final choices on things. Yes, do I defer to a producer when it comes to maybe sound things or oh, you know, if I'm confused about something, yeah, sure, yeah, let's go with that. That sounds better. Okay, I'll go with you. But I have to also, as an artist, have my own driven ideas and you know, and self. You know, put this thing forward myself. And so I want someone who will be able to listen and who'll be able to also be, have that kind of quiet strength that a producer needs to have. And Larry, because he's a bass player and a very, you know, incredible musician himself. And people sometimes say to me, oh, does he still play? I'm like, are you kidding me? Of course he plays. You know, he's just not traveling as a bass player. I mean, at all the time or was traveling as a bass player all the time because he's busy producing and that's really what he loves to do he loves to be this person who is a facilitator of great ideas but also who can contribute but also remove himself so when i work with him these are the things that i'm looking for and now it's become what i look for anytime i walk into a session and it's tough because i don't find it often i find either producers who are ordering lunch i'm sorry to say that and that's a great thing we need somebody there to do it but it doesn't need to be a producer and it certainly doesn't need to be paid to do that the, the you know the, the fee of a producer but also producers who will say too much and and pick things for you and do things for you and it's like no i i also have ideas and i also or i would like to listen to what the piano player has to say and not you necessarily all the time so somebody who can yeah who can who can really allow for the best music for the best session to happen 
Um, and in the case of Larry, he's also very good about, you know, picking mics and picking placements of things and saying, let's A, B these two mics. Let's record with both mics together. So I've recorded things where there's two mics, one in front of the other. So the second one also adds something to it, like an old Telefunken and, and you know, a Neumann or something or that vice versa. Or, or he has the sweet mics that he brings also, you know, that recorded everybody, right? Dylan, Joni, everybody. So you'd sing on those mics and I think you sound better too because you just think that you're better because those folks have sung on it. But but when he's mixing, the choices that he makes, the, the placement of things, the 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 you know, the dimensions of where the voice is, how the voice sounds, you know, opening a voice is not the same for everybody. Like when, when you say, I recorded and that week my voice was a little nasal or veiled or something. And I say, can you open the voice a little bit? If I make a request like that to Larry, I know where it's going to end. If I ask somebody else to do that, hello, you know, it might sound very sibilant and very high endy and very thin and very metallic or because it's been opened, you know. So I look for a producer who can understand my language, my terminology also, and who can stand having me in the room. I'm very opinionated, <laughs> so I'm tough. Like I walk in the room, I can be very quiet, but I can also be very opinionated. And, and I think it's important to hear from people. I also like to hear from the musicians. So sometimes I write very skeletonian kinds of things, skeletal pieces, where there's a, a faint bass line and I say simile or, like this kind of just make your own thing and then I write some changes but then some moments I don't even like there's a G something and I, I write G something and I don't even know what the G is because the melody is minor, minor and major and this and that so someone like Lionel you don't have to write for him <laughs> I mean, he is unbelievable and ridiculous and just incredible so if you write for him you can find him if you don't write for him he might surprise you and, and every take is different and then he brings his rhythmic thing which is unbelievable because, you know, he, he's African and, and he can hear in patterns that you don't even know exist, you know, and he can, you know, superimpose this over that and make it sound like it's, you're drinking milk, you know, it's like nothing. Like, so Larry in the room with Lionel doesn't, he doesn't say anything because he doesn't need to. And, and maybe, or he might say to Lionel, maybe on the second chorus, let's just leave a little more space. So Gregoire can blah, blah, blah. And that's it. And and Lionel doesn't take offense because he's not telling him what to play. He's just saying, we'll, we'll let, um, uh, you know, so-and-so uh, -so have more voice here, right? Gregoire have a little more space. Okay, great. So the shaping of things, and I think his experience, of course, working as a jazz musician with, you know, with people like Joe Henderson, with Carmen McRae. He was a bassist for Carmen when earlier the one when he was, I don't know, 18 or 17, with Willie Bobo, with Freddie Hubbard for four or five years in Freddie's band, you know, as a jazz bassist. So he, he brings that. And then also the fact that he went deep into pop music and rock and can draw from those, you know, from these traditions that are very different than jazz, that are much more um, structured and, and, you know, in jazz, the freedom that we have in jazz sometimes is also punishing because if things are so free, then you miss structure sometimes. So the combination of these two things. So I, yeah, I look for someone who's really intelligent and kind and, uh, and who can put up with me and also who can love being together and creating something new. And I think Larry, even though, you know, he sometimes tends to work with similar artists because people gravitate towards him for a reason also, uh, but he's worked with Herbie, of course, and Wayne and like, you know, in different, I mean, Herbie Hancock, of course, in Wayne Short, but uh, so producing people of that caliber, geniuses and legends, and then people who are just starting. And so how it's the same for him. It's, it's not a job. It's this brilliant opportunity to create. So I, I'm lucky that I go home or stay in, in this bedroom here <laughs> at my friend's house with a man who who has so much knowledge and experience, but also who's always looking forward to this new thing, whatever the new thing is, and listens to singers and loves singers, loves listening to singers. I mean, that to me, you know, he loves me, not just because I'm Luciana, but because I'm a singer and he knows the, the also loves vulnerable voices, not voices that are full or necessarily just capable and competent, but also that lack something that, because that lacking leaves space for something else, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I'm incredibly lucky. Thank you.